Okay, so the first thing we want to do to get our chicken ready for our enchiladas is um, I've got about four cloves of garlic here and one of them is kind of small but I couldn't find any bigger ones. So just whatever to your taste with the garlic and I'm just going to um, take the husk off of them or whatever that is you call that on garlic and then I'm going to chop them up. Okay, so you can see I pretty much just, I guess this is mincing the garlic. I chopped it up as fine as I could. And I'm going to spread it all over my cutting board here. And you'll see why I do that in a minute. Okay, so I've got some raw chicken here. And I'm going to spread it out all across my cutting board. This is just, this is the way I do it. Also, I'm baking this chicken because with Twisty's um, tummy troubles and just having her gallbladder out, I do not want to add to her misery by um, frying this chicken, so I'm going to try baking it. I usually do fry it, to be honest. And one of the things I do when I buy this chicken, and I do use only chicken breast. It's just to my taste. It's what I like. Um, but anyway, I've got a mallet here because I don't here because I don't have like a meat tenderizer and I just took a grocery bag and turned it inside out so that you know there's no paint from the bag or anything going to get on the meat turned it inside out and wrapped it around the mallet and I am just going to beat my meat with the mallet I have a cookie sheet here that I have covered in foil, and I have done that because my cookie sheet is funky looking. It's old, and I know that some people just love to find anything and everything wrong in a video. So I covered it with um, aluminum foil to keep it looking nice and pretty, and you know, it does make for an easier cleanup. And I got some olive oil. I just put like maybe a tablespoon of olive oil on the cookie sheet. And I'm going to spread it out with my baster doohickey thingamadoodle here. I don't know. You're kind of in a limited space here. So you're all going, I can't see. Well, you can see enough. You know what I'm doing. Now I've got the cookie sheet. And I'm going to take the chicken. And I'm going to spread it out. And I'm going to make sure that I get all of the garlic in there too. And I am washing my hands after I've handled this meat each time. I don't want to lay it out so that it's it all cooks evenly. You want to look, spread it out even all over the pan. Now I've got some salt. I'm just going to sprinkle salt all over the chicken. And ground pepper. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. I'll go the cheap way. I don't have a pepper grinder. And just for good measure, I am going to sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on top of the chicken. I'm going to make sure it gets all over it. You can and you probably should put the salt and pepper on after you do the olive oil, but I missed that step, so I'm sorry. Now I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to put it in my oven on 350 until it is done. I'm not exactly sure when that will be, so I will let you guys know after that's done. So our chicken is done, and now I'm just going to let it cool, and then I'm going to pull it apart, kind of shred it with my hands. Um, but while it's cooling, we'll get the enchilada sauce ready. Okay. So now we've got our blender out, and for the purpose of the video and the way my little kitchen is set up, I can't like show it blending. I'm just going to show you what to put in it. So I've got a whole like medium-sized jalapeno here, and it had some little bad spots, so I cut them out. And add about three small cloves of garlic, not too tiny, but you know, not big ones, or a couple of big ones. Um, but I had most of mine are small, so I'm adding small. 
going to add two cans of diced tomatoes. Um, I like using the canned because it's already ready for what you need it for. It's kind of cooked already. So if that's a question, yes, I would do canned. Or if you have cooked tomatoes that you canned yourself, you can do that too. And I'm going to add a whole can of tomato paste. This is six ounces. And yes, that's important too. It gives it the thickness and the quality of this. I was going to add some um, Mexican peppers. I call them Mexican peppers, but anyway, the kind you get at the Latin market or the Mexican market here. Everybody calls it the Mexican store. I don't mean it offensive, but that's what we call it. Um, but I forgot to get them. So, I mean, it's still going to have a good flavor. I do it this way all the time. I usually don't add all the fancy peppers and stuff, but I wanted to for the video. Anyway, so we've got our tomatoes, our pepper, and our garlic in there. And the next thing we want to do is add a couple of teaspoons of salt and about a teaspoon of ground cumin, if you can see that there. Just kind of shaking it in there, kind of guesstimating what I'm adding to it. If you need to add more of the salt later, you can. I'm going to take this to the motor and for the blender and I'm going to blend it up till it's nice and smooth and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, I've got my non-stick pan and I've turned the heat on medium high. You can use a non-stick pan or you can use a cast iron skillet, it just whatever you, you know. I don't work well with this particular recipe with anything but a non-stick pan, so I prefer to use a non-stick pan. Okay. And I've got my tomato sauce here, my enchilada sauce as I call it. And this is kind of my version of it, so before you flip shit and like that's not the recipe and blah blah blah, I just kind of threw a little twist on something that we like to eat and, you know, kind of gave it my own little vibe. My little white girl vibe to it, so you'll you'll live through it. So what I'm going to do is let this heat up. We want this to be the same temperature that the pan will is, you know, you want it to heat. And then you'll start making the enchiladas. I'm using for the um, cheese on the inside will be this quesadilla cheese, which is shredded. You can get it. Um, I bought this at Walmart. And I got some Parmesan and Romano cheese. It's just what they had at my local store. So, you know, if you want just plain Parmesan or what's really nice is the Mexican crumbling cheese, but it's very expensive and I was on a really tight budget this past week. So, can't pay $7 for a half a pound of cheese. And then the next thing is, of course, you need corn tortillas. Corn, 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 corn. I just don't think flour tortillas are good with this recipe, so I use corn. Try to get a good quality one. These happen to be from Aldi, and I kind of like these tortillas. When they're heated up right, they're really good. Some of them that you get at Walmart, though, have a really, just an awful taste. And no matter how much you heat them, they don't, um, that chewiness doesn't go away. So, careful with what you, you know, buy for tortillas. Okay, so now that my enchilada sauce is starting to heat up, you will notice, too, I'm, I'm not sure if I said it or not, don't put the whole thing in there from the blender. You do this a little bit at a time because it's going to kind of cook away and you're going to use it. And once you see it, that it's um, looking like it's the temperature of the pan, you can see i got some smoking going on here. Um, you can go ahead and turn the heat down just a little bit and then go ahead and start preparing the enchiladas. Come here. Can you open that cheese for me, that bag of cheese? So we want this to cook. We, we don't want to just put this in here and take it out immediately. You kind of want that tortilla to get nice and soft and cooked into that sauce. And you can see I shredded my chicken up, too. I kind of just hand shredded it. It's really good, too. I can taste some of it. So it's hard for me to really tell you how you can tell that this tortilla is done. But one thing is, 
if you overcook it, it's going to start to fall apart. So, yeah, that first one's kind of a bust. So I'm going to put the, can I see the cheese? Once you got the, the tortilla done, you want you have to kind of work quickly with this. You just want to throw some chicken and some cheese in there, and I'll put the cheese on first so that it melts. And then if you can, just throw a little extra sauce on top of that. And then with your spatula, hand me the Parmesan. You flip it. And then sprinkle some. Parmesan cheese on it, and voila, you have an enchilada, white girl style, of course, but it's good. So, I'm just going to repeat that process, and when uh, my sauce starts to cook down and I don't have enough in the pan, I'll just keep adding a little more at a time. And with um, all the ingredients that I used here, you can make quite a few enchiladas. Finish doing this, and then I'll show you a finished plate of enchiladas, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little recipe. Peace, y'all. Bye-bye.